Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button now. I want to show you a trade that I've just done and I can't guarantee that it's going to make money, but I would like to share it with you. So first of all, this is not financial advice. You can use this for your own research. And if you decide to do it, that's up to you. But always remember to consult with professionals before you make any investment decisions or trading decisions. So I want to share with you a trade that I've just done. Many of you are familiar with Lewis Group, which is which they are listed on the Janusburg Stock Exchange. There's a couple of things I want to tell you about them and also teach you in the process. If you hear from my Twitter feed, then you would have probably read a couple of the threads already and you would see that I spoke about come dividend and ex dividend. So I explained that come dividend is when a company announces that they're going to pay dividends, but haven't paid them yet. And ex dividend is after they've made their, pre their dividend payment, then the, the stock now trades with no rights to any dividends until they announce the next dividend date. So those are two important things to remember. All right, so come dividend and ex dividend. So Lewis Group is currently in come dividend. So they announced, I think it was on the 27th of May that they will be paying one Rand 95 for every share that you own in the company. So that gives us an opportunity, but it also adds hype to the company. So potentially people will buy the share for one reason, and that is to get dividends. So the share price usually goes up in that time and then X dividend, it usually goes down. So someone that's trying to make money off just the dividends might lose money when the stock goes down or if the stock goes down in capital depreciation. So, so it's a loss. So you might be getting the dividends, but you could be losing on capital appreciation. So that's, that's the first thing I want to point out. So I've been watching Lewis for a while all right, they've been on my watch list. And today I've decided to enter in on the trade. I'm using 20,000 Rand as an example. I have 20,000 Rand to invest and I've put 10,000 Rand in now. So 50% of the capital that I have, I'm putting it in the stock. My aim is to make an excellent trade. So I want to benefit from capital appreciation and I want to receive the dividends. So yes, maybe I'm a little greedy, but this is now the risk I'm willing to take and hopefully it pays off. Uh, obviously the downside risk is that I lose capital and that exceeds what I'm going to get in dividend payments. So I need to manage my risk and because I know how much I'm prepared to lose, I'm prepared to make the trade. So don't just go and deplete your life savings now trying to chase the trade to make dividends because you could find yourself in trouble if the, if the stock drops 15%, 10%, whatever it is, the dividend amount won't equate to what you've lost, what your unrealized losses might be. So with that being said, Lewis, in my opinion, isn't overvalued. They showed us how resilient they were in this COVID era, this COVID time, this lockdown period. So their furniture and electronic businesses have done exceptionally well. They're high in cash and they plan to pay dividends out. So that's a positive. And they've been repurchasing shares for, for a while now. So I, I believe they're still undervalued and they still have more upside. So with that being said, because I've been watching the share for so long, they were at about 34 Rand. Let me just move this. Yeah, maybe you can see it they were on 34 Rand, all right? You can see this massive rally that they had here. If you use candlesticks as your graph, so I just use this line bar, uh, line graph to, to show you that, just to give you a clear picture. If you use candlesticks, you would see this line is completely gone. It's like, what's happened? It's a, there's, no, there's no line there. It's just a space in between the graph. So this is because the share price moved up so rapidly that there was no trading in between or little trading in between during that time. So it just shot up real quick. 
that's why there's that gap. So this is why I've used the line graph so you can see what I'm talking about, this long line, this long shoot up here. So that's very important because you can see how it's, how it's trending down now since that shoot up. So since the 27th of May, in fact, when it announced that they're going to be paying dividends, they've been gradually trading down. So I've been wanting to buy for a while. The reason I've entered now is because it's dropped to this first support zone that I think potentially could hold. So that's why I'm only putting 50% of my capital in case I might be wrong. So the share could still drop further. So 30 is the first support line that I, I'm taking my position in. It could bounce up from there, trade sideways, could go down, maybe continue up. So remember I said people get excited when they hear about dividends, people buy the stock. So I'm believing that the stock has dropped now and people are going to want those dividends. And in the short term, the stock is actually going to move higher than 30. So if I'm able to buy at 30 now, and I benefit from capital appreciation and get dividends in the process, that is a great trade for me. So I, I don't plan to invest in Lewis long-term. I just wanna come in for the dividends and exit, make myself a bit of divvies and spoil my mom, send her some flowers, maybe go out for a good dinner and just, just, just relax, okay? Whatever you wanna spend the money on, that's up to you. Uh, whatever you want to use it for, up to you again. So like I said, let's get back to the point here. Uh, 30 Rand is the support zone. I entered and my average purchase price is 30 Rand 12 cents. So you, you can see the price is live now. It is the 22nd of June and it's it's nearly, nearly five o'clock. So the market will close soon. So I got an average purchase price of 30 Rand 12 cents. And my risk, you can see I've got these two down lines here. So if that first support line doesn't hold, right, I'm looking at a 4% unrealized loss, which could take me down to about 29 Rand. So Lewis could still be making its way down to 29 Rand. And if we look at this spike going up, most likely it is, because it's probably going to make its way to this very strong support line that I believe will hold. But I... I'm not an expert. I'm not guaranteed. I can't tell you that it's going to hold. It could fall much further. So th that's the risk of trading. Okay. So I I'm just using technical analysis now based on support and resistance lines of making a decision, taking, taking a trade, using a risk reward ratio. And that's how I'm basing my decision here. So let let's say 30 doesn't hold and it does collapse well, not really collapse, but it does fall down to 29 Rand. We're looking at a 3.4% loss on capital. So if you invested 10,000 Rand, you're looking at a 350 Rand loss, okay? Your dividends for 10,000 is going to be about 500 Rand. So you, you've still got that leeway. You've you unrealized losses now, you haven't sold. So you, you've got 300 and 50 Rand, let's say in unrealized losses, but you've got a payment coming in a month's time of 500 Rand. So you, you can balance it like that, depending on how low the share goes. For me, I'm dollar cost averaging in. So I'm prepared to buy more if it drops down at 28. So if I've got 20,000, I've put my 10,000 in already. I'm gonna throw my next 10,000 when it gets to 28, bring my average purchase price down, I can't do the math out of my head right now, but it'd probably bring down my average purchase price maybe to like 29.70 or something where, where it is about now. So I'm trying to balance, okay? So you have to understand how much risk you're willing to take. And you have to understand there is an, a, a, a hard chance of you actually losing capital trying to just chase this dividend payment. So if you are a risk taker, then it might be worth your shot because I believe the upside is much higher than the risk going down. So if it doesn't hold 28, 29, sorry, 29, we're looking at a fall down to 28, 30. You can see on the graph here, that was the last support zone. You can see it bounced off there and it continued up. 
we had this massive spike and now we're trending downwards. We add the support line now and we might test the next support line. So it's all about managing your risk. If you prepare to hold it even further, then that's on you because you might not have your stop loss or you might not be paying attention to it. The reason I, I'm prepared to hold it to about 28 Rand. If it goes lower than 28 Rand, I'm out. Then I'm taking a loss of about 7%. So if I've got 7% of 10,000, I'm losing 700. I was chasing that 500 Rand dividend payment, but now I'm already 700 Rand in the red. So I could continue to hold maybe a week from now or two weeks from now, the share could gradually move up and actually be on 32 Rand. So there's also the time that you have to wait, how long you prepare to wait, how much risk you, you are prepared to swallow in the process. And if you actually have the conviction to stay in the trade, for me, my strategy is 28, I'm out. So I've got my entry point, 30, half my capital. Next entry point is at 29, the rest of my half my capital. And then my stop loss is at 28. If I'm out at 28, I'm out. All right. Then I, I'm risking, I'm willing to risk up to 1,400 Rand to chase 1,200 Rand in dividends plus capital appreciation. So the downside risk for me is 7%. That's my capital I'm willing to risk and lose. But the upside potential is dividends. Okay, one Rand 56 per share. If you come from the Twitter post and you, if you follow my 20,000 Rand investment, you would know that I'm getting about 1,040 bucks after, after tax. So the, the upside reward is the, the dividend payment. And obviously anything higher than 30 Rand, I'm benefiting from capital appreciation. So let's just assume it goes back up to 34 and I'm still holding, I'm looking at an 11% capital appreciation. So if I have 20,000 invested, let's just say 10% for simplicity, I'm making myself 2000 Rand in unrealized gains, plus the thousand in dividend payments. And then if I say, okay, that's my exit strategy. I'm out. I'm taking home a cool 3,000 Rand. That's an excellent trade where I'm getting the dividend payments and benefiting from the capital appreciation. So think of it as a scale, how much risk you're willing to take for how much reward you, you're willing to chase. So I just wanted to share with that, share that with you. You can come to, I'll send the link. You'll see the link in Twitter. If you aren't on Twitter, go to Trading View and search for Talking Sense. You'll see the analysis there on my profile and you'll see the graph that's shown here on the screen and where my first support line is, the second one and the third one, which is ultimately my stop loss. So thank you for joining this video. I hope there was some sort of educational aspect about it and that you've learned something. And yeah, please, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please go and share a video. Tell your friends about the channel. I would really appreciate that. So until the next video, I'll see you again. Bye-bye.